tonight's speaker, uh, Miyako Yoshida, OBE, um, probably needs very little introduction. Um, she is possibly Japan's best known uh, ballerina of recent years. Um, she, of course, has an OBE, as I just mentioned. She also uh, has a purple ribbon medal from the Emperor of Japan. Um, she was a principal at the uh, Royal Ballet, and she uh, is now, uh, not every year, but she's uh, three times recently been a judge of the prestigious Prix de Lausanne um, Ballet Prize. Um, and she, she moved back to Tokyo after retiring as a principal from the Royal Ballet. And in fact, um, she's quite in, an important person for me. Um, I went to her Sayonara performance um, when she retired from the Royal Ballet in Tokyo. She, in fact, it was a tour in Japan, was her final tour. Um, as a principal. Um, and I didn't know much about ballet myself until about 10 years ago. And then I, I have a daughter who became obsessed uh, with ballet. And so I ended up going to an awful lot of ballet uh, over the last 10 years. And actually, uh, Miyako is my daughter's hero. Um, and we have, uh, we don't have copies today, but um, she produced a manga uh, called Miyako. I don't know if uh, anyone's seen it or whether it's even on sale anymore. And describing, <laughs> describing the story of her life and how she came as a fairly young girl to the UK, uh, to the Royal Ballet School, and found the food dreadful um, <laughs> and things like that. Uh, so I, I had to um, queue up for ages to get Miyako to sign it, and I finally managed to get it signed at about 2 o'clock in the morning uh, at a party in Tokyo and, and gave that to my daughter, who has treasured it um, ever since. So anyway, I won't talk anymore, um, but... Uh, that's Miyako Yoshida, and she will be coming in to talk to us in a minute. Um. Basically, uh, it's going to be a kind of interview uh, style, because Miyako didn't want to kind of prepare the whole uh, lots of uh, half an hour talk. But I think it's, um, it's perhaps better, it's more lively, uh, so that uh, we can kind of draw out her true self by giving her questions. Okay. <laughs> I came up with uh, my own uh, questions which might sound kind of a uh, lemma because I don't do dance uh, myself. But uh, I don't presume uh, all of you, or most of you, are very, very much uh, into the ballet. Uh, I'm sure lots of you are fans, but then you yourself don't dance uh, by yourself. So I thought it's uh, perhaps okay to ask her somehow kind of um, uh, rather stupid questions, but uh, you know, uh, you can perhaps correct me if I ask you anything uh, really too uh, basic. Um, let's start with um, uh, really sort of a, a common uh, question as uh, how did you start your dancing or what made you interested in dancing as a child? You started at uh, nine or years which is perhaps uh, relatively late, uh, because some children start mm -hmm. at three or four, yeah. <laughs> but at nine, uh, what made you uh, become so interested in, in ballet? Well, um, my friend was learning, taking mm -hmm. ballet lessons. Well, looking back, I'm not sure if, if it was ballet class or not, but because when I was... Um, I think four or five years old, mm -hmm. I went to see her school performance and then I decided this is it mm -hmm. because it was just amazing with, you know, as a child with costume and makeup and everything. So, and then I asked my mother to, um, I asked her, like, I want to take ballet classes, and, but then she thought, I might get bored or mm. forget about it, so she left it a little bit longer. I sort of started learning Litomiku dance. Ah, what is it in, in English? Do you know Litomik? It's a music and it's a yeah. mm. Mm. It's the kind of like a, with the rhythm and music and you sort of like a skipping and mm. that basic mm -hmm. sort of stuff. I start taking class mm -hmm. and for a few years. Mm. But then I realized like... For a few years? Mm. Right. Mm. I really liked it, but uh, I wanted to wear point shoes. <laughs> so <laughs> I realized I have mm. to go to ballet mm. school mm. to wear 
activity and punctuality. Yes, and of course. Yeah. So I asked my mum to. Mm -hmm. Did you find it difficult, those basic sort of uh, stretching <coughs> and uh, could be quite painful? Oh, I used to love it. I mean, I'm not I very loose. Love it. Mm. I'm not very loose, but um, I, was, I used to like going there. Ah, I mm. see. Mm. Once well, a week. Once a week. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why I asked was, I, I wanted to do ballet a lot when I was about maybe same age, seven or eight. Yeah. And my mother said, uh, and I used to go to those uh, classes, you know, window, and then I was just watching yeah, everybody. Yeah, I was the same. I was the same. <laughs> <laughs> mom, mom, I want to do it. And she said, oh, wow, but you are too stiff. You cannot do that. <laughs> and uh, yeah. as a child, I couldn't even touch my the floor when you're standing, you just bend. Oh. And so <laughs> maybe I'm too stiff. So <laughs> I just gave up. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so you used to love it. Yeah, yeah. Mm, great, mm. great. Well, so um, the next question is, after you learned several years back in Japan, mm. you came over to, to Britain, yeah. and then you started uh, um, your career at Royal Ballet School. Mm -hmm. Why did you choose Royal Ballet School? Well, after I won the Prix de Lausanne, which is like a ballet competition in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know it, but uh, and then I get a scholarship for one year, and then I could choose any school in the world. Mm -hmm. But um, well, um, I used to watch lots of um, Russian ballets in mm -hmm. Japan because they used to come for Japan, yes. mm -hmm. and also Beja company as well. And I used to love them as well. But then. The Royal Ballet came in the 80s, mm -hmm. and um, it was so different, mm -hmm. and I really liked, the, I admired the royal style and all that. And also, um, I don't know if you know Yoko Morishita, who yes. used to dance mm -hmm. with the New Rev. I'm from uh, Matsuyama Ballet School, and she was in the Matsuyama Ballet Company. Mm -hmm. and she used to come to England and work in the gala and things. Oh. And Mel Park, who was the headmaster oh, of the Royal Ballet, mm. they knew each other. Oh. So it was a, sort of like she invited oh. me to come to a ballet school. But to, to be honest, I, to me, any school mm. would be great for me, mm. I think, because I wasn't planning to stay mm -hmm. that yeah. long. I was just thinking of just one year. Just one year? Yeah, oh, and I then see. after school, go back mm -hmm. to Japan and mm -hmm. work in the company there or something. Mm -hmm. So, but now I'm so happy that I'm glad that I chose the Royal Ballet School. And <laughs> because because we are so happy you've chosen the Royal Ballet. And you. I ended up staying like yes. many, many years. You said 26 years. Yeah, something like that. That's like lifetime. So, yeah. That's yeah, great, great. It's a good choice for me. <laughs> and you once told me that you shared a room with uh, Darcy Basso in the Royal Ballet uh, Yeah, School? changing room. Yes, mm, changing room. room. Okay. Yes. 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 That was that was great. Mm, she's yeah. retired as well. Yes, yes. Quite quite yeah. recently. Or no, no, before me. Before you. Yeah. Oh, I see. I see. But she yeah. she was amazing because um, she had the two children, and as a mother, mm -hmm. she was great, and mm -hmm. as a ballerina, she was wonderful. And mm -hmm. I don't know how she coped, but she was always like a very I don't know, happy person, mm, mm, nothing mm. complicated, Great. so nice. The next question is, um, uh, what was it, because you said Royal Ballet was different, and uh, Royal Ballet style, mm -hmm. my third question was, what hits you as a, a so different from the Japanese ballet? Um, or, you know, mm -hmm. well, you said that Yoko Morista was, had a, a close connection with Royal Ballet. Mm -hmm. But uh, do, you, do you find it different, the Royal Ballet style, different from Japanese sort of ballet style? It depends which school and which company, so this, but um, most which company, company? yes, like mm -hmm. even in Japan, there is a more like a Russian style type of dancing oh. company. Mm -hmm. and, so uh, I guess Matsuyama Ballet, who, which uh, I came from, mm -hmm. was more like a royal style. Okay. Mm -hmm. But that's like, um, what's the difference is like, um, 
it's more like a, a dramatic and it's more like acting and more realistic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what they want us to do, I guess. Do you think it's just Royal Ballet or it's British Ballet style? <laughs> Because you, 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 you didn't just uh, dance in Royal Ballet, you mm -hmm. danced in uh, uh, Sunrise. Yes, uh, yeah. Ballet. But yeah, they are both very similar. Mm -hmm. style, yes. But now they, it's different because so many, you know, all like foreigners, like everybody was yes. everywhere. Yes. So very mm -hmm. mixed. It's, uh, it's very. But in uh, my days, it was more like, a, you know, all the people were from Royal Ballet School, mm -hmm. so it was like a very similar style and so how how much was the kind of ratio or, or, or ratio of the, the British British dancer in the Royal Ballet when you were there? Was it like half British and then half were all international? Well, when I first joined the company it was more most of them were English. Oh I see. So all mm. no Oriental. Mm. It's like people from New Zealand or Australia mm. and it was but uh, it was like that. Oh, but now more like a, yeah. Did you find it difficult to fit in? Mm, <laughs> I guess yes. <laughs> because it's not because I was Japanese, but because I didn't know what is the what it's like to be a professional dancer. I, I didn't know how it works and how the company was, you know, go on tour and to perform. I never thought they perform so much. Because you were a student before and then you started your professional career here in this country. Yes. I see. Yes. I see. Well, next question is, Sir Peter Wright, uh, who adores you, he once said that, uh, in a way, I find Miyako almost uh, understands the English style more than the English do. Do you <laughs> agree? Do you think so? <laughs> I don't know. It's just like, a, yeah, he says that. Often, but, uh, mm, I don't know, but I I tried. I mm. tried very hard, and it took me years and years to mm. learn British style. But uh, that was my challenge, and um, to dance classic ballet, I think it is very important to to learn the style, and mm -hmm. because like uh, sometimes say. Um, well, even the choreography is saying <coughs> which production, mm. you know, who's choreographed, and then you have to sort of learn and perform that way. Mm. Even there is a freedom of your expression mm. if you, you know, use your own sort of um, language, body language, mm. and all that. But. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I never think. Well, for us, it's kind of difficult to understand the Englishness of the you know, Royal Ballet, but mm -hmm. uh, kind of uh, maybe more emotional, more dramatic, like you said. Yes, but mm -hmm. then, like, say, Ashton Ballet, which mm -hmm. is more like um, more like showing the steps and the mm -hmm. you know, body movement and mm -hmm. twisting and many little steps. Is it uh, classic or is it contemporary? It's classic ballet based, yes. but yes, mm -hmm. but um, several ballet style is like a Ashton ballet and Kenneth MacMillan. Mm -hmm. That's like a two big mm -hmm. choreographer, mm -hmm. very famous. And I guess Kenneth is more like realistic and more dramatic mm -hmm. ballets, and Ashton <coughs> one is like a, he used to love you know beautiful things, mm -hmm. so it's like a giving sort of type of ballet. And but something like a Cinder Ballet, which is like Ashton's ballet, that uh, I never danced such a hard ballet. It mm -hmm. looks nothing, it looks just beautiful, mm -hmm. but it's mm -hmm. so difficult. I think that the British ballet is like that, it's not like, Russian ballet is like a, more like a showing off the, you know, line mm. and technique and all oh. that, and you really can see mm. how mm. hard it is. But British ballet is just like, it looks nothing, it looks so easy and mm -hmm. all this, mm -hmm. but it's so hard for the dancers. Mm -hmm. I can kind of understand. <laughs> yeah. Miyako has been um, a training Japanese uh, figure skater 
who was the world's second uh, last time the Grand Prix final, uh, Satoko Miyahara. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was like in summer you, you gave her lessons? Yes. Like July? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. something like that. But then ever since, her expression is so oh, improved. Yes, I'm so happy improved. to see that. And then she... everybody is saying like she's much better. Technical wise, she had everything. Mm. But then expression wise, mm -hmm. she was, I wouldn't use the word boring, but she was like, how can I say, liveless in a way? Because she was such a shy person. She couldn't open up and share herself with mm. the audience. But now she's doing it. So what was the magic? <laughs> no, it's just like she, she was like a mean when I was like, her age, 17, 18, I was like that. Really? So I understand exactly what she's going through. I see, yeah. I see. But she just changed so much. And then I keep watching your video, uh, giving lesson to your young uh, ballet students. And then you are telling those students to pay more attention to your back when you're leaving the stage, mm. pay attention to your back so that mm. you can drag your audience with you, mm. that kind of thing. Mm. It's very, very important. Mm. Yes. And then yes. deliver your message to the, the people at the amphitheater mm. so that it's, it's not just the people in the front. Mm. But I think she's now doing that. Yes, oh, I'm so happy. So, to you know, I, I want you to keep dancing like, like your book. But then at the same time, I feel so grateful that you are now giving part of you to those young younger mm. generation and not just ballet people but also for those theater students as well it's all about expression it's all about art mm. so uh yes. yeah i think it's important that you really you dance for the audience and you shouldn't ignore them it's sometimes like you sort of like a concentrate on your dancing or mm. your technique too much and then you forget. Yes, true, true. And then because you are saying to students now, you are doing it all right, but you know, mm. they, 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 dancers are paying too much attention to the technical thing, then they suddenly look like themselves, not the, the role they are mm. playing. Mm. And uh, that is something perhaps, and then you said something like, it's okay, but you can still not be on the stage with the audience who's paying for your performance. <laughs> You're not saying it directly like that. You didn't say that. But I just felt like <laughs> what you meant was it's, it's good, but it's not good enough for the people who are here. Mm -hmm. As an audience, because you're a professional up there. That's right, exactly. Because, if, yeah, as a professional dancer, you yeah. have to do that. Mm -hmm. yes. Talking about audience, do you think uh, there are differences uh, between audience from country to country? Like mm -hmm. Japanese audience are not that enthusiastic and bravo, bravo. They don't mm -hmm. do that. They're very quiet. They're very <laughs> quiet. <laughs> very serious and. But then after the performance, they appreciate so oh, much see. and it's very warm and kind. Mm. But do yes. you find it difficult to dance in front of very quiet audience? Sometimes, yes. Sometimes. Because like uh, if you, uh, if I could feel they're enjoying it, then dancer mm -hmm. gets more into you know. Yes, it's more like um, feedback. Isn't yes, it? yes. <laughs> they sort of like uh, give you energy. Ah. And, uh, power to dance so, so you can be noisy while watching <laughs> yes, <please. laughs> because in Japan if you make any sounds people just shh that's know, right yeah. <laughs> yes. so quiet yes. very yeah. quiet yes. you, you can't even you know yes. if you move then they oh. will just turn around and look at you so mm. they, and when I performed in China that was completely different they were taking pictures and <laughs> really? yes it was amazing <coughs> that, that was like uh, 30 years ago or something so I don't know what it is like now but mm -hmm. uh, I was dancing in Romeo and Juliet, mm -hmm. and there was like a very famous balcony scene. Mm -hmm. I was looking down to my Romeo on, on the balcony, mm -hmm. and then phones start ringing. <laughs> and then he started talking. <laughs> he was answering the phone. Oh no, really? <laughs> yes. We were both like looking at each other going, <laughs> yeah, it's just so difficult, oh but God. it's like an amazing experience. I, mean. <laughs> I hope it's Never different again. now. <laughs> I, I think audience should be kind of educated, um, mm. you know, the audience attitude. 
Mm. So when you are more open to um, different culture, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know, uh, it's uh, I, I kind of feel audience are different from country to country, and uh, I didn't know how how you feel quiet <laughs> audience if you prefer but, quiet audience. But then when I go and see kabuki, mm -hmm. the audience seems to be more relaxed. They like eating. It's I mean, really it's really <laughs> Yeah, and suddenly, like you go and see ballet or opera, they're really serious. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. So I wish yes. they could sort of mm -hmm. relax and uh, enjoy. <laughs> but we can't expect people eating something, you know, <laughs> <to> ballet <laughs> or opera or something. Mm -hmm. Can I just, uh, Chiko san, could you, could you come to the front and then start taking photos, please? <laughs> sorry, because I, I, sorry, sorry, because I, I want a photo of uh, you. Can I just explain? Sorry about that. You know? Yeah. Because uh, I asked Liz, but Liz is now struggling with the computer. So, <laughs> <laughs> Ah, hi, Corey. Hi. Crush that Okay, so next question. <laughs> um, people often use the word precise uh, describing your, your, your ballet style. Uh, precise movement, and then I, I do agree you you have this precision, but uh, I think your style is more uh, lyrical mm. uh, because your movement is so soft and smooth. Mm. At the same time, precise. What do you think about it? Wh wh which is more important for you? Hmm. As a classic ballet dancer, you have to be precise, I mm -hmm. think, because mm -hmm. the, there is uh, so many things that, you know, it should be this and it should be that, mm -hmm. and so many rules. And <laughs> but then, precise, it can be boring, like, mm -hmm. you know, you sort of, even like a perfect dancing, perfect, like a, you know, mm -hmm. Because when I see you dancing, you are precise, but there's this uh, slight discrepancy to the music you are deliberately doing. Mm -hmm. And then that just makes it more, how can I say, human, more sort of lyrical in the way. Mm -hmm. You don't move right on the, the sound, you move slightly, and I think well, it's, it's deliberate. Like, mm, because you have to, like, a play with the music, it's mm -hmm. like if you dance like that, it's too, it, it is boring, you have to mm -hmm. raise, you know, where... Mm -hmm. Can you teach those things to the students? I guess or I could, but then you really have to feel it. Feel it. So, yeah. Have you ever found any students that you try to teach them, but they never get... You know, what I'm asking is, do you have to bond with it? Or can you learn it? Well, I guess it depends who. Mm. Because some, someone is born with it and mm. they can do it naturally. Someone can learn, someone can't even they, you know, mm. practice. We have mm. so many hours, it's just... It's just mm, yeah. So it's not just about practice? Mm. Some some ballet dancers they don't like practice. Mm. Like Sergei <laughs> Polonin, you know. <laughs> if you know Sergei Polonin used to be with the uh, Royal Ballet, yeah. and then he quite out loudly said, uh, "I don't like practicing much, and then I don't have to because I can do it without practice." <laughs> and he he was able yeah. to do that. That's like a uh, Teddy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kumakawa. Uh -huh. He used to hate rehearsal. He never took class because like he said like that's gonna make me tired and I can't work properly. <laughs> but now like he takes class and it's it's amazing how changed he really? is. Really? Why why has he changed? Well, I wonder. <laughs> because now he's teaching students, maybe. Mm -hmm. I yeah, he has to set a good Maybe example. You have to, with, like, you know, as you get older, you have to, ah. you can't just suddenly jump mm. and, you know. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, that's, Maybe. That's but, um, but then, um, I think, 
No, ballet dancer likes rehearsing a lot, mm -hmm. and, but you, if you have so many shows and then ballet keep changing, so you don't, you can't have enough time to mm -hmm. rehearse. So you have to sort of like um, learn how to mm -hmm. go on stage without enough rehearsal. Without That's enough the rehearsal. yeah, another oh, thing you have to cope with. So when you are performing one program. Um, I mean, basically, you you already have so many other programs at the same mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. and then when somebody suddenly asks you to do the other program, other than you're showing right now, mm -hmm. can you actually do it, or do you have to go no. back and then start remembering that? Or is if it the, all in your body? If the part uh, it was like I was covering, then mm -hmm. I have to go on. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. I can say no if I. I can't do it, but uh, most of, of the time people go, if there was mm -hmm. injury people, mm -hmm. they go on like in short notice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But like say, um, last November I was here and so went to see Anastasia, and then like next week later they were doing um, Wayne's new ballet. Mm -hmm. And then we played that they were doing performing Nutcracker or something. So it's just like, I don't know how they cope. Mm -hmm. It's getting worse now. <laughs> it's getting worse now. <laughs> so many ballets like, uh, mm. got on and um, I don't know how they yes. cope. I mean, I have to confess, I am learning figure skating now. And last year, I even entered um, into a competition, <laughs> which was only one and a half minute choreography. <laughs> I just struggle to memorize that. But then for ballet dancers, yes, it's like yeah. two hours, three yeah, hours. Yeah, yeah. And I just, I couldn't. Yeah. How can you? Yeah. Obviously, like, well, you're a professional. Well, I can't. But, <laughs> yeah. but uh, all these people, yeah, they have to, I mm -hmm. guess. Yeah. They're really quick to learn as well. Absolutely. I mean, sometimes uh, I can learn quickly, but then I forget <laughs> it's really quickly. Oh, so. Very quickly, <laughs> I see. Well, very general question, but what is that you think most important as a professional ballet dancer? Health or passion or? Mm, I think it's passion. Passion. Mm. You have to like it, you have to love it. Yes, you have to love it because it's such a hard work. Mm. If you don't love it, you can't continue. Mm. Yeah, I, I realize that. You realize that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you really have to. What is your advice to younger ballet dancers who aim to be professional and dance globally? Mm. Well, like, um, what I often say, you know, dancers is like, a, it takes time because like nowadays everything, you know, very quick, it happens, mm -hmm. you know, instantly and, um, so they want to know the results really quickly. <laughs> and ballet isn't like that. It takes years and years of practicing, yeah, training, and you have to change your body and mm -hmm. learn so much. And then you have to, um, well, I guess your experience shows so much on stage. Mm -hmm. So you have mm -hmm. to live your life really live your life. yeah yeah so it does you know it's, it takes time that's it takes time. I, yeah you have to be really hard working and patient somebody told me um when i asked why are there much less uh, female choreographers mm. and somebody told me because female dancers has to look after their shoes is that true? Do you think? <laughs> <laughs> they really have to look after their shoes constantly. Yeah, they do. It's and then hard work. Hard work. <laughs> it takes a long time to prepare. So compared to male dancers, they are handicapped in that sense. That was the answer. Uh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But then, like, um, yeah, ladies dance more than more than men. Yeah. Mm. Really more than women, really, yeah. More yeah, practice yeah. or longer. No, no. It, in the ballet, it say like a swan lake. They, mm. you know, they don't. They're not on second and fourth act and things like mm. that. Ah. In Giselle, they finish after first act. <laughs> you know, things like that. True. Yeah. True. 
right through. Lots of work, long hours. Long hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Last but very important question. What makes you so enthusiastic to keep dancing? Your title, mm. the book title, Odori Tsuzukeru Ryu. Yeah, because... There's a reason to continue <laughs> because dancing. Because I love it so much. I because love you love it so much. But then I sort of like... Um, because I'm doing the same things, like you realise... Um, how can I say? It's like... It's interesting to, you know, my body changes, but then, then um, even you get older, things get better, mm. and so, um, like, uh, sometimes get easier, and it's just, I never get bored of dancing, mm. and so, I don't know. Because you love it. Yes, mm -hmm. love it. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mia, for that. Yeah.